Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the down, out, and up method, which is how you can use your lead hand and lead wrist to really help you compress the ball much better. My friend John Bierkin and I are gonna go through that. We're gonna show you what that is, show you a couple key feels that you could take right out to the driving range and the golf course to compress the ball much, much better. Let's go ahead and take a look. I know a lot of people who come in and see me that have these swing faults that if they could just move a little bit better, right? If they had more flexibility, more mobility, we could get a lot of work done a lot faster. But I haven't been able to find an easy way to do it until I saw this Mobility Pro. And what it gives you is a detailed, customized, personalized plan right for you. So once you go through the testing, it tells you specifically what to do. I love that. It's easy to do. I did all this right from the comfort of my own home. Simple little, I did 15 to 20 minute sessions. You could do as long or as short as, as you want to, but you can do hours of mobility, right? It's just a couple of minutes, super easy. It's things that are gonna affect your ability to swing the club better, right? So a lot of those nagging swing faults, there could be a lot of reasons outside of just your golf swing as to why you're doing it. It's how your body and your brain are putting together how you can work. So if you're interested in swinging the club better, improving your swing, something you can do that's easy, something you can do right at the comfort of your home, and it's free to try, then I would try out this Mobility Pro app. I've been using, you can see my score when I started, in literally a month, I went from that 76 to that 93. So I absolutely love this Mobility Pro. I've been using it myself. I highly, highly recommend that you try it as well. John, let's talk about what the down, out, and up method is, what the move is. Um, what does it do? What are the benefits of it? And then maybe I'll hop in and we'll, uh, we'll hit some with it. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So, I mean, just historically, we see golfers all the time, you know, either slicing it, the ball to the right, losing distance, coming over the top, not compressing the golf ball. Um, that pesky open club face is just the demise of a lot of players. Right. It keeps you and I busy. That's right, yes sir. But we, I really want to get my students hitting it better, straighter, farther. Yep. And so basically what we're doing is we're talking about the lead wrist angle. So as we go back, we want the back of that left wrist as a right hander down as I keep turning, the back of the wrist is out, and as I get more to the top of the backswing, it's up. Mm. And that's what I found to be a very uh, good secret move to help a lot of players. Down, so we go out down, yeah. out, it's out, the back of our left wrist is out away from us, okay. and then it's up to the sky. And you can see what that does to the club face, it really ensures a square club face. I love it. Let me, let me hop in, John, yes. and let me ask you some questions, and let's work through this a little bit. So, um, down, out, and up. Now, as I'm working back, the down piece, I'm really feeling from, let's say, the takeaway to maybe like shaft parallel. Correct. Like that. Exactly. And you can see the logo of your glove is much more down at the ground. Versus it being exactly. up towards the sky. So, as, yeah, as I say, you, you don't want that to be visible. Get the back of your left oh, wrist good. out of your vision. Hmm. Okay, so it's down to the ground. Now, if you keep swinging back from there, it's now out. It's away from you. Yep. It's again, out of your vision. Yep. So it's down, it's out. And then as you keep turning, it's up to the sky. So that's more of a flat wrist. I really like that too for um, someone who's doing this to know how much do I need to do it. And that not seeing the logo part's really good. Yeah. So as I go down here, because I could even say, hey, I could do it a little bit and still see my, Correct. my logo. But if I if I really do it, and I, now I don't see it at all. Correct. Yeah, got it. Okay. And, and quite candidly, most people are better off overdoing this right now anyway. Let's let's get rid of that the weak slices or not compressing the ball. Let's hit some hooks. Who cares? Exactly. You can always come back. And we were talking off camera before, and I was like, hey, John, you know, people ask me all the time, right? Like, when do I square the, the, the club fish? Should I do the takeaway, back into the top? And you were like, do it the whole freaking time. Exactly. Right? Like, keep, keep, keep squaring and, it. And overdo it, it and right overdo. now. So logo's down towards the ground. Yep, so it's down. down. It's out towards the camera behind me. Yep. So I, and now, again, I can't see my logo. Here I can see it. Correct. And obviously, as the more I see it, the left wrist cups, the face opens, the shaft gets steeper yep. right here. And then I'm continuing that towards the sky at the top. Yep, get the back of that left wrist or your lead wrist up. All right? the way up. Let me All just do one up. or two yeah, here. So please. down, out, out, and up. up. Now, 
what we're saying this does, John, like the main contributing factor is it changes the club face alignment. Yeah, right? that's number one. Yeah. So if we were looking at the club face for some checkpoints, as I do this here, we're saying, you know, the toe is in front of the heel, the face is tilted down yep. some amount. Generally, that, that leading edge of the club is approximately at the same angle as your spine. Perfect. Although if we're going to overcook it, yeah. right, it would be even beyond that. Where another way to think about it is the actual club face is looking down at the back of the ball. Got it. Not okay. out to me, but down. Got it. And again, see, if the wrist is down, the face, face is, down. is down. The wrist is down, the face is down. That'll go on the screen in text, very good. So I can't see the logo. If the wrist is down, the face is down. The face points down towards the ground. But John, yes. that feels like the club face is really closed, right? Yes. And then I would say to that, good, let's hit some and let's see what the ball does. Exactly right. Okay, right. okay. So here we go, club face tilted down, um, back of the glove down, behind me, towards the sky. So when I start this process, might I do a little bit of like the leapfrog like we mentioned, like maybe I'll a just do- A progressive drill where you yeah. start small, absolutely. Okay, so maybe like I've got a nine iron here, maybe I start at like 100 yards max. Y exactly. And just get the first part right. Exactly, Let let give your brain and your body time to communicate and actually feel and sense it then you can increase the size, then you can increase the speed. So of course, I'm gonna do what feels like only a takeaway swing and it'll go probably shoulder high. Exactly. And we'll, and maybe I'll hit a couple. So let's, let's start with that, John. So let's hit a couple here. So I'm gonna feel the glove out of my sight. The yep. face is kind of more at the ball and at the ground. Yeah. And I'll just do kind of like a hundred yarder. So back of the wrist, club down. And I hit it about 140. Yeah. So I'll go but that, the face was so square, right? <laughs> yeah. And you compressed it, the ball jumped off the I face. I hit it great, I hit it great. And that's one of a handful of reasons why this drill, the down out and down. up method is so important to hitting it straighter, lower, farther. Yeah, and the ball flies off the exactly. face. Exactly. Dynamic loft is lower. Exactly. Yeah. Let's do that again. So I'm gonna try and shorten this up a little bit better than that. So logo down, yep. face is down here. And for right now, I'm just feeling that and I'm swinging. I'm not trying to do anything else. Perfect. I'm just going logo down towards the ground. Yeah, good, and that's another good strike for me. Absolutely. So most importantly, now, right, let's, let's call this what it is too. My club face is normally pretty good. My club path is pretty good, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But let's say it wasn't, right? Let's say I'm, I'm just playing golf normally, right? And I'm, my club face is more open. So normally I don't do these pieces on the way back. I make a backswing and my face looks like this. And then I get some kind of over the top motion, yes. right? What they might very likely see in the beginning of doing this is the ball going left. Low left. Low left. Exactly. And we would say, excellent. Correct. That would be a great first start. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep progressing the swing line, keep hitting it left. And then Correct. we'd maybe start to look at club path. Exactly right. Okay. So let's- No question. Let's do, let me just progress the swing length a little bit. So I'll feel the down and then the out part now. So I'm trying to hide the logo from myself. That's a really good one, John. Hide the logo mm -hmm. from myself until about halfway back. So down, out. Yeah, that was solid. Yeah. Yeah, you want to really keep, keep that lead wrist, the back of that lead wrist out of your, out of your vision. Can't see the logo. Okay, that's good. Can't see the logo. So then as I go, I'm feeling that. And maybe, John, as I'm going, you know, I'm kind of testing it, trial and error. And I might, I might find, hey, all I really need to do is the takeaway part and I'm good. Right, some people that may be the matchup, that, that's all they need. Yeah, and, or maybe, hey, I feel the takeaway and halfway back and, that's, and then, I'm, then I'm great. Maybe you're kind of working through each phase, seeing what leads to what we want. Exactly yeah. right. So let's do the whole deal. Logo down, Ow. hidden from me and then towards the, towards the sky. Down, out. And up. up. Okay. That was really good, that rehearsal. Down, out, and up. Yeah, that felt good, John. Yeah, really good. There. So, for me, because I, my club face is pretty square, the difference that I feel that is in the dynamic loft, right? So I'd feel the ball coming off the face hotter Absolutely. compared to normal. So now let's go back to the golfer, like I mentioned that this might be really good for. So they've got an open face, John, right? They've got a downswing that's probably yep. 
steep to try and fix that. And so in the beginning, if I normally have the face too far open, I open a door 40 degrees on the way back, I've got to close it 40 on the way down. So now we're no longer opening the door 40 degrees, right? Correct. Now the club face is more square on the way back. But if I still have my old downswing pattern that had needed to close at 40, yes. now I might have sort of overdone that, expect correct. the left shots. No question. Right? And in a period of time, I think both of us would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, I would let myself hit some really solid left shots for a period and see what my brain organically adjusts to go with it. It's exactly right. If we need to set up practice stations to counteract that, we can do that. Yeah. But you may instinctively, athletically adjust uh, almost immediately anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, like, see what I would do. Correct. Now, let's say I don't do that, right? Let's say I'm doing that, I'm hitting pull hook, pull hook, pull hook, pull hook. Yes. I'm hitting it solid. My arms are going farther, I like it, but I want to go yes. back to straight. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we would probably look at would be then the club path piece. Correct. So you normally have it open and over the top. Now it's square and over the top. Let's get it square and maybe from inside. Yeah, so there'd be a couple ways. Why don't you set up to yeah, the yeah. ball? There'd be a couple ways I might set up a shaft. Yep. I think there's a few ways you could do it. I would say, let's say number one, Eric, would be as if we put just a stick down the target line, yep. right? And your goal is to launch the ball to the right side of the stick. Perfect. To me, that would be the most athletic, most instinctive, less technical. Do that first. Try that and see if you can launch the ball to the right and then well, curve let's, it. Let's test it out. I'll okay. take that challenge, John. Okay, I see what you're doing here. And that's, I'm glad you said it because I, I would say too, genuinely, like that would be the first piece I'd throw in. Right. So let's, let's see, see what you simplest. do. That's the simplest. Yeah. So I'm still, I'm still getting the logo out of my sight. But now I'm like looking here. Correct. With my eyes. Okay. Your launch window is to the, the right, right of the stick. And that's basically like right down my target line. So now I'm here. I'm going to feel the same thing. My eyesight is just to the right of that. Correct. And we're going to see what I got here, John. Logo down and away. Perfect. That was good. Yeah. So that's one way. That's, the, I would say, let's call that. That would be our step one. Step one. Okay. Yep. Then to me, step two might be, um, there's two different ways we can do this. Go ahead and set yeah. up. And let, let me jump yes. to with that front station. Yes. Like as we're going through this, let's say like I did that and it didn't go perfect on the first swing. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm like, I might give myself like a whole week of practice sessions. Yeah. Right. Like. There's some time involved Ab with that. No question. Okay, right. It's not one yeah. swing and then I'm done with that. No. Okay, okay. No. Okay. Or That's it might it. be, maybe it's one practice session at a minimum. Got it. Or it may be a week or two of just that Sometime. one drill. Sometime. Yeah, exactly. And as I'm looking to the right of that, I'm anticipating there's going to be some changes in what's happening to the club. No question. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, okay I'll shut so up. Okay, so now, yep. now we would go with more of a um, alignment aid we're gonna put this on the back end of the target line. Yeah, perfect. And have the stick, the golf ball under the front of the stick. Yep. Okay, and now you have to make sure that you, you swing Underneath under that. It. Same thing, right? And John, when you set this up, this is going basically <clears throat> right over the ball. Correct. And then the height of it, you can probably lower progressively as it gets easier. Yeah, let's call it about uh, the length of a grip, plus Perfect. or minus. Perfect. Good. So the club face, the logo's away from me, and then I'm feeling like the club's working a little bit, kind of more lower to the ground and a little more from inside earlier. Right. Is what I feel. And then you could even add in that visual of the stick being out there and the ball launching to the right. Okay, got it. So I could so, even maybe combo that. Absolutely. Okay. You could have both out there. All right, let's do this one here. So the logo is hidden and I'm underneath the stick. Test number two. Yeah, and that was a good one. So that was, I hit that size, probably just like a five yard push. And for me, as I'm doing this, if I'm again the golfer who normally, John, would have the face open and I'm over it, and I just went pull hook, pull hook, pull hook, pull hook. Yes. I put this in, maybe I overdid it a little, and I hit a five yard push, but really solid. That should be a sign to me that, hey, okay, I did that downswing piece pretty good. It's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And cool. then just another variation of, of essentially the same exercise, but works better for some, is just to mirror the, the shaft angle. 
Yep. So it's a swing path thing, a swing, swing path, swing plane. Yep. We're going to go back about the length of a club okay. and go about two club heads outside that and then use an alignment rod or a broken shaft. And this is another one where it's going to ensure that the swing direction is slotting more from the inside. And that's just like the same, basically the same shaft angle. Correct. Okay, cool. Yeah, match it to the angle of the club you're sure. using. I'm, you know, an advocate of using middle irons to practice. I like seven irons a lot. Yeah, okay. Eight irons. And one club head back, two club heads out of the ball line. Correct. Cool, beautiful. Okay, so I'm still feeling the logo down. Absolutely, down, down, out, and up. And then I'm just feeling, again, the club working a little bit underneath the stick yep. on the way down. Testing me here, John. I like it. Logo down, out, and up. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Really one of the key parts of the swing, getting that lead wrist angle correct. Let us know if you have any comments down below. Do you like the video? Have you tried this out before? Uh, maybe what other things you do with your lead wrist that have helped you compress the ball? I want to keep the conversation going down below. If you like the video, we always appreciate if you can click that gray little like button, leave a comment like I mentioned, click the subscribe if you haven't, share the video with a friend. All that action really helps the channel. Appreciate you guys watching.